this is somewhere, it might be anywhere in England. And it's Monday morning. It might be any Monday morning. I know you're disappointed, Senior Martinelli. I'm more than disappointed. What can we do? You don't want to exhibit the machine with a notice saying out of order, do you? Even if we did get it going today, it's too late to get it there in time now. Too bad, but there it is. Goodbye, Senior Martinelli. It really is a great pity, new machine not being ready in time for Milan. The Italian agent's moaning his head off. Says his stand at the fair will be like La Scala without a prima donna. So you've given up the idea of sending it out there. Good. I can get on with my development tests. Your development tests? Development of my export sales isn't important, I suppose. You mean you've got it running? Well, it looks as though we found the snag. We'll be certain by tonight. That's what I came in to tell you. There wouldn't be time now to break it down, crate it up, reassemble the other end. But if we could send it all the way in one piece, could you get it into a box trailer? Well, if I said no, you wouldn't believe me. In other words, you could. <laughs> well, there always has to be a first time. In one of our vehicles, and you want it in Milan on Friday. Well, we can try. When's it sailing? Just a moment, let me see. There's a usual thirst quencher for Brussels. A refrigerated van of sausages from Manchester. A special piece of radiological equipment for Cologne. A special piece of transport, too, by the look of it. A couple of trailer loads of machine tools from Coventry. Some plastic injection machinery, whatever that is. Seven, ten, twelve. Oh, yes, there's room enough for yours. Yes? Thank you. A trailer will be here tomorrow to load the machine. Goes all the way by road. Oh, they finished the channel tunnel, I suppose. No, it crosses to Antwerp by ferry from Tilbury. Well, I bet you get to Milan too late to do any good. Wednesday morning, 7.30 or thereabouts, a ship approaches Tilbury. And the machine for Milan leaves its factory. On their way, too, are some of the other loads destined for Wednesday's sailing from Tilbury to Antwerp.
insurgent load from the land. Late, I suspect. I suppose if it's not here by sailing time, it wants us to hold the ship. Let's wait and see when it gets here. Floating roadway across the sea, whose story began as the last war ended. From time immemorial, the swords of war have been converted into the plowshares of peace. But rarely has the conversion been as straightforward as in the case illustrated on this page. The LST, or landing ship tank, was one of the most ingenious of the devices elaborated for the invasion landings and the long hold with bow doors and ramp has proved equally useful for the transport ferry services of peace. The pictures we give were taken in vessels now maintaining a regular service, ferrying vehicles to and from the occupation forces in Germany, and locomotives and rolling stock provided by UNRWA for the rehabilitation of Europe. They were acquired from the Admiralty and are operated by the Atlantic Steam Navigation Company. And so an idea was born the idea of running ferry services specifically for laden commercial vehicles on short sea crossings. Two years later... Vehicle ferry service to Northern Ireland. ASN starting operations shortly. Empire Cedric, former tank landing ship, will inaugurate the first commercial ferry service between Preston and Northern Ireland when she arrives here on May the 19th. The transport ferry, Empire Cedric, left for the Ribble today after fitting out in Harland and Wolfe's yard at Belfast. Her first sailing will be from Preston. Preston, a port suffering from the aftermath of a war. Striving to build up again the trade it had lost. To this port, with Preston's blessing, came Empire Cedric. Preparations are in full swing for the scheduled departure on tomorrow evening's tide of the former tank landing ship Empire Cedric to inaugurate the new ferry service. At the seaward end of the dock, workmen have erected a permanent loading stage constructed from Mulberry Harbour equipment. And tomorrow the Empire Cedric will move up to this stage, her bow doors will open and over the huge ramp a variety of vehicles will drive into the capacious hold. Another Lancashire correspondent, in his enthusiasm for the new service, wrote, 80 lorries, a capacity load for the opening trip, were driven aboard. Biscuits, baby food, electric cookers, refrigerators, textile machinery, a bus for the Belfast City Corporation, and new cars were in the first cargo. The vehicles were parked in the hold or on the deck. The drivers retired to communal cabins where they will eat and sleep until they drive the lorries ashore at Larne 12 hours later. The skeptics gave the service six months. Ten years later, one ship had become four and the number of vehicles carried annually had multiplied 20 times. On the 5th of March, 1957... A ferry boat of the type now known as the Roll-On, Roll-Off ship was launched at Dumbarton today. The vessel named Bardic Ferry may be described as the first ship to be designed especially as a road haulage vehicle ferry. She has been built by William Denny and Brothers and a sister ship to be named Ionic Ferry is to follow in the autumn. One of the many special features of the ferries is that they will be provided with Denny Brown stabilizers and will probably be the first ships fitted with such equipment for the benefit of their specialized cargo rather than as a comfort for their passengers. The vessel will have twin rudders aft as well as a bow rudder. Midships. Midships. Bow gear. Bow gear.
an industrial development program for post-war Northern Ireland. New factories, new needs, new trade with Great Britain. To this, the transport ferry service made its contribution. An important development since the war has been the vehicle ferry service between Preston and Lancashire and Larn and Belfast in Northern Ireland. This specialises in the carriage of goods shipped on road vehicles, either on a private trader's own lorry or trailer, or on the trailers of a road haulage company. Vehicles are driven on and off the ferry ship and provide a through door-to-door -door service with the elimination of dockside handling. Shipping goods by lorry load ensures a quick run-through from producer to customer with the minimum of port delays and negligible losses through breakage and pilferage. Around the transport ferry service, now with five ships, have mushroomed up a number of freight moving companies operating a door-to-door -door service between farms, factories and warehouses in Ulster and customers all over Great Britain. They have also enabled companies to open up markets in Northern Ireland. The ferry service has benefited as much as Northern Ireland and so has Preston. But another target remained with ships like these to establish a regular service between Britain and the continent of Europe. There were many problems. Couplings on British trailers which didn't match with the towing units that would haul them on the continent and vice versa. Achieving satisfactory arrangements for customs examination to be carried out without discharging vehicles. Satisfying licensing regulations which differ from country to country. The problems were solved and now a ferry service is running regularly between Tilbury and Antwerp. Commercial vehicles are her main cargo, but she carries passengers and their cars as well. And, of course, the drivers of any commercial vehicles who must accompany their loads. Is your load clear? It's all yours. Good, only just in time. Still, the ship sails on schedule, that's the main thing. Keeps everybody happy. 3.45. As the last load is backed on board and Bardic Ferry prepares to leave Tilbury, she becomes the focal point for the loads already on their way across Europe, which will meet her in Antwerp on the morrow. Loads from Germany, Holland and Belgium from France <laughs> 